Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Dirt Road Divinity. I have a guest in studio again. This is Jim Summers. Hello, again. Again. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> so much for joining me last week, talking about our Scotland trip. You're welcome. It blast. was fun. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're back for more. <laughs> Poor audience. <laughs> Part two. <laughs> Part two. But wait, there's but- more. <laughs> There always is. <laughs> there is. <laughs> this week, we are talking about our recent trip to Ireland. So the adventure was two weeks long. First week in Scotland. We dove into that last week on the podcast. The next week was in Ireland. That's what we'll talk about today. Um, I feel like I should have worn green since we're coming to Ireland, but that's okay. I, I wore my necklace. Oh, yeah, nice. My, my Irish Excellent. treasure. Right. Yes, Excellent. very exciting. Uh, Ireland was amazing. It was. It was completely amazing. So we're going to talk about like where we traveled, mm-hmm. uh, things we learned. A lot. Uh, some challenges we may have had. A few. <laughs> yes. Um, some work we did. Mm-hmm. Amazing people we met. Lots of amazing people. Beautiful sights that we saw. They were, Yes. Yeah. And um, maybe some lessons learned. So for anybody who can actually hang out with us until the end of the conversation. You have to stay to the end <laughs> to get to the lesson part. That's the unfortunate. <laughs> or, or fortunate. Or the for- fortunate. That's the best part. It'll that be, is the best be part. Yeah, it'll be Because it'll be fun. Yeah. Between here and there. So from Edinburgh, we fly on Aer Lingus we, <laughs> to Dublin. We did. To Dublin. We did. Um, yeah. Unfortunate name for an airline. Um <laughs> But yeah, it was, you know, it's interesting because that that day, I mean, it was such a great experience in, in Scotland that we kind of didn't want to leave. And um, we're, I was thinking there's no way we're going to top this, yeah. right? I mean, and so, um, and yes, we jump on an airplane. Um, what time of day was it? It was kind of afternoon. Like afternoon. Yeah, we'd, we'd just been to Roslyn Chapel and headed back to the airport. It was afternoon. Our flight was delayed. So we got in a little bit later than we anticipated. Um, <laughs> the initial flight. Was at the car rental desk. Oh gosh, yeah, this was not an auspicious start. Too. This is, or is it auspicious? Not good. Whatever the word means, I'm not sure what the word means. But it, yeah, so we get it. We get into Ireland and kind of, kind of excited and and but a little tired. And so we go to the rental car desk, and and the rental car guy is not having any of it. Like he did not look very excited to see us at all. And and then. um I can't remember all the details, but well, we get, the, the we main de- probably, detail. Well, that is, yeah, we get to that part. They require in Ireland, and I don't know if it's just this rental car company or like the whole every rental car company will be this way, but they require a five thousand dollar or five thousand euro deposit, like they want to hold five thousand of your, your euros. Yes, yeah, we were in euros because we were in pounds before. Yeah. So now we're switching to Ireland because mm-hmm. it's not part of the UK, which right. we'll talk more about. Yeah, so we're in it. We're in years, but it's a it's it's five thousand euros. It's a hell of a lot of money. It is like yeah. it's like five thousand dollars, right? Basically, yeah. So that was a surprise. I was like, I was kind of needing that for so, other things yeah. like lodging. <laughs> yeah. So so that kind of got us started off, and and he was not very sympathetic to our plight. <laughs> so that was that was our first Ireland experience. I'm like, okay, well, Scotland. That's one for Scotland. <laughs> Zero for Ireland so far. We had already decided Ireland was really going to have to bring its A game because we had yes. such a magnificent time in Scotland. We did. And oh, honestly, I, and this is wrong of me and just indicative of my ignorance at the time, right? I always kind of lumped Ireland and Scotland in the same mm. bucket and thought that what we experienced in one would be very similar to what we experienced in the other. And I was completely wrong. It was entirely completely different. Completely wrong. But yeah. yeah entirely different um from culture history food drink i mean the, it, it was just completely and entirely different and i'm just so grateful it was and i'm really glad i was wrong yeah i mean the the, the, the what was a bit similar the, they're both beautiful so the mm-hmm. landscape's yeah. beautiful the it road is still different though very, they were different they were different kind of to- topography but but beautiful kind of in their own right roads were probably the most similar thing you heard about roads scotland <laughs> at an Ireland too. So the, that those there's some similar and roundabouts. Apparently they've adopted the world standard of roundabouts up is in Ireland as well. But yeah, we, we certainly learned that Ireland is not part of the UK and and um, it was interesting. I think we mentioned with the with the Queen passing away. Um we did not see much news about that in Ireland at all. You know, I'm sure there was a lot of it in Scotland, but and probably Northern Ireland. 
probably you know, as well. Yeah. Two, you know, different, different countries. So anyway, we, we, we get so to we get a car, we get a car, we get a car. And then we head south and east <laughs> from Dublin. Okay. So before we start all this, I have to, a disclaimer. So my hands are empty. I do not have a spreadsheet. So this is very troublesome for me. So we started out this podcast and I said, hey, Lisa, are you going to sp pronounce spreadsheet? And she said, no, we're not going to pronounce spreadsheet. I'm I said, so I got this panic look. Like, what do I do without my spreadsheet? To know or win every day. So I don't, I don't have that. So that's my disclaimer. Now, I think we are going to go through some pictures as we go and then then um, talk about the picture. So that's the yeah. plan. It's a little different, but I'm just, I'm a little anxious because I don't have for the last video, I inserted pictures after we had our conversation. Mm -hmm. So this time we're going to kind of talk to the pictures a little bit. Um, and then I'll insert them in the video as well. You're not so, putting the, the the airplane picture in? Are you? Oh, I am. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's only embarrassing to me. That's why it took us about 10 minutes to get started. Because <laughs> there was lots of laughter from the initial. You'll see it if, if Lisa puts it up there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, moving okay, on. Okay, yeah. okay, moving on. Thank you. So <laughs> again, Ireland was, was um, the way that this trip kind of came about was Lisa dives into her intuition and says, oh, where do we need to go? <laughs> and it thinks, works. It and works. thinks that she's on the right path yeah, yeah. until I realized that until I'm not, not. That's, that, that's in a moment, um, which ended up being the right path. I just didn't know that there would be like a circuitous root the scenic root of the soul it's perfect and, it was the perfect path and this is a bit of spoiler mm -hmm. when you get to lessons learned because i think that's yeah. going to be one of the big ones isn't yeah. it even if you're on the wrong path you're on the right path look at you being all deep i know with Woo! that but i don't I take but that's for later that's for lessons learned so don't, <laughs> don't listen to that now okay but, so our first we, we jump in the car and we head south and we drive all the way to gory which is mm -hmm. on the east coast of ireland so it's right on the irish sea right the reason we went there because there's really I, i'm not sure that there's a whole lot there when we told other people in ireland that we went to gory they were like why and i was like oh but it was beautiful it was beautiful yeah it was on the coast phenomenal and, yeah the hotel yeah. that we stayed in was like the seaside hotel and resort or spa it, or something really nice Holy really wow. nice yeah with the walk down to the beach mm -hmm. and it was you know it was amazing it was gorgeous and mm -hmm. affordable i mean that kind of a that kind of a resort spa hotel type place would be you know five six seven hundred dollars a night probably yeah two US. times and, or more what we paid for it there yeah, yeah and it, it was wildly affordable yeah. and beautiful Mm -hmm. beautiful but one of the things i loved about the fact that we stayed there is that i i'm a sunrise chaser and jim has adopted these ways i'll go was, i'll go i'll go with you yeah i'll participate which i'm so which grateful I for yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's something yeah. you like too so um we went the next morning to watch the sunrise over the east coast yeah east no east, it, yeah east, east coast. coast yeah and it was the, the right Irish side seat. yeah <laughs> thank you over the irish sea and it was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, just gorgeous. It was beautiful. Uh, yeah. And the the little trail to get back to the coast, it was so cute. It was almost as if they were playing homage a bit to kind of the fairy um, gnome. There were like little mushrooms and little fairy houses and toadstool. Yeah. So I think. Yeah, it was it was cute. So that so you're at this resort, it's a beautiful resort, and then there's a trail to this this amazing beach, and in between there's a forest. Yeah, right. There's a forest. So so they kind of played up the mystical forest, and it was yeah. neat with the the all that kind of stuff. But um, now one thing I don't know if you mention it, but but one thing that's interesting for me about the beach is typically the beaches that I've been to in the past, you walk on the beach and you find seashells, mm -hmm. and they're all seashells and seas that sea seashells. Can I say that seashells? Seashell by the seashore. Um, <laughs> But they didn't have seashells or not many. What they had were these rocks, like these these round polished rocks that I guess the water had had polished them into these circular rocks. I thought that was amazing. Just the the they were smooth. They were they were smooth. They were smooth rocks yeah, as opposed to shells. Yeah, I, I maybe no one else finds that interesting, but they I thought beautiful. that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, you brought some home. I did. You did. I did. Yeah. So and they they were very nice rocks. Hmm? Potentially good skipping rocks. They were excellent skipping rocks, yeah. in fact. Yeah. yeah excellent. For the rock skippers in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> but the beach was absolutely gorgeous. And I'm, if mm -hmm. for no other reason, I mean, what you'll learn here in a minute is that we probably should have never been here based yeah. on my intuitive. There was a reason, hits. a very specific reason we went to Gory and mm -hmm. in the area. 
um, that that Lisa will explain. <laughs> but the the or and the 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 magic of it is that we would not have seen all of this beauty of the East Coast if we hadn't have gone here. Yeah. Yeah, so it was totally, totally worth it. Absolutely gorgeous. The scenery from mm. this particular area was magnificent. I mean, there there was the woodland area, but there were also the green pastures overlooking the sea, horses in the pastures. I mean, it was just absolutely stunning. And there was sunshine that day. Mm -hmm. It may have been our one of our few days in Ireland with sunshine. It was rainier in Ireland, Scotland, mm -hmm. um, but we still had good, pretty good weather for the most part. But we... Yeah. But yeah, this was a really nice day. Yeah, it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, so then <laughs> the reason the, the reason that we came to Gory in the first place is that um in doing research and kind of <clears throat> doing my in, intuitive assessment of uh of Ireland where we needed to go energetically, I got you know guided to go to the Hill of Terra, which is a significant um, a significant spiritual, energetic, historical point in Ireland. And I thought that the Hill of Tara was right outside Gory. Turns out that's Tara Hill, not the Hill of Tara. Yeah, we learned that Tara Hill, different, <laughs> different entirely, entirely different, entirely different than the Hill of Tara. Yeah, but we learned this after trying to hike to the top of Tara Hill. Right. Well, having... first we tried to drive up there. Which was was traumatic. The coming down was even more traumatic. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. Yeah, that that. We'll jump ahead. Ooh, yeah. So so we're 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 going trying to find the the top of Terra Hill because we thought there were all these like structures. What's well, a big like, deal? It's significant a, things it, there. Yeah, it's a it's a um yeah. I mean, people come from all over the world to see it. Yeah. So we're expecting. Oh well, there's maybe a visitor center. Maybe there's some parking. Maybe there are other people. It's nothing. I mean, uh, you know, there's a little tiny sign that points up the hill where there's a path. Yeah, and I'm I'm starting to to get the feel that maybe just maybe we're in the wrong place. Well, and you were maybe. you were saying, oh, there's a high cross, so I'm going to go up and 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 I know what I'm looking for, and 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 um, I think this was we got up there. So we're, we're going up this little road, and I don't know if you have a picture of the specific road that, that you go up, but um, we talked about Scotland skinny roads. Well, when you have a skinny road that has grass in the middle of it, so it's not all dirt, it's a paved road, but there's grass literally growing in the middle of the pavement, that's a bad sign. So you probably need to avoid that road. So we did not. We went right up the hill. And it we, just kept getting narrower and there was a and tiny narrower, and narrower. Yeah. And there's a tiny little parking lot, which we ignored because ah, that can't be it. There's got to be a bigger parking lot. So we go up to where like literally we're trying to squeeze the car between these tiny little areas. And we ran into a local up there and, and, and walking, walking, retreat. walking her dog, walking yeah. her dog, of course. And, and, uh, you know, struck up a conversation and she goes, you know, this is, this is not the place to park. It's way back there. <laughs> if you want to come and hike the hill. So I said, okay. So um, so Lisa got out of the car. So why don't you you go hike and and go find all your stuff? Because at this point, we're still thinking it's the right place. Yeah. Right. And and you go off and 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 find all the monuments and relics and things that you might find. And I will drive the car. Which was your first. Which I did not drive the car experience. in Scotland. So this was my first opportunity to drive, which was fun. It was exciting. Um, I I did not get out of first gear the whole time. So I went all the way back down the hill um survive in neutral in neutral yeah mostly in neutral i think i could put it in first once or twice and then <laughs> and then park the car and then walk back up and so in the mean meanwhile lisa was exploring the um the terra hill location yeah at gorgeous views yeah absolutely beautiful I, hike in beautiful. its own right I, so it was it was the highest uh, elevation wise area in on you know on the coast there where we were and so looking out over the ocean or looking the other direction over the pastures and the fields you know and seeing these just magnificent oh gorgeous views yeah, I, it was absolutely absolutely stunning so mm -hmm. for that i mean sometimes getting lost is even better maybe we didn't know we yeah. were lost yet we didn't know we were lost we, yet well, but we, we were just lost we just weren't in the right place <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like that definition and but you know we're just enjoying the hike and it's beautiful and i think you were just a little little curious yeah why you know like, hey I, I went down and I, I didn't see anything over here maybe maybe we should go the other way i said no no i kind of went that way and so it was starting to dawn on us that maybe we were maybe in, in, in a different well say in a yeah. different location yeah yeah so um <laughs> there's there's the road yeah yeah 
on the way back, <clears throat> um, Jim was like, hey, I'm, I'm enjoying driving the car. <laughs> and so, I said, okay, cool. How about you drive for a while? Yeah, you drive. Oh, yeah. And so I jump in the passenger's. <laughs> And this is the moment <laughs> <laughs> at which I became incredibly apologetic <laughs> for all the hell I must have put Jim through <laughs> the first week in Scotland because I'm serious. Within like 10 seconds of me being on the left side of the car, the passenger side, this far from the imminent doom, <laughs> I start having a complete and total anxiety attack, like breakdown. Like, at, at first we were laughing because I was so ridiculous, but then the laughter turned to sobs. It, and I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, I thought we were joking about it and cause it, we were, you know, we were a little close and, and you're like, Oh my God. And, and, and so, thought, Oh, you're laughing and you're kind of laughing. And I thought, Oh, okay. You know, this is fun. And I'll see if I can a little closer or whatever. And, and, um, and then it, and I was like, I, are, are you okay? And, and Lisa's like, no, no, I am not. Okay. Like, I ended up kind of fetal position yeah. in the front seat. And I I I I've not I I'm I'm not I don't know that I've ever had like a full on <laughs> like panic attack before. I don't I must not have if I don't remember. But this I think was it. Total complete meltdown. And it had nothing to do with Jim's driving. Thank it, you. It it really didn't. You were you were doing fine. It was me freaking out out about the situation and then i started feeling bad like i got i've got this massive <laughs> guilty streak in the midst of this about holy shit i just put him through this for an entire week and so i felt guilty but then i felt so much gratitude to you that you didn't react the way i did because i was a mess well what one of my takeaways was interesting one of my takeaways um i'm glad you're okay <laughs> and there was a point at which i'm like we're stopping and we're switching like in the middle of traffic. And so it was like, we, we came up with to a construction zone. I'm like, we're switching right now. Now, um, this after I walked the background, yeah. I'm like, just let me out. Just let me out. Get me out. But what's interesting is, is I think it was the, the, it was in Scotland the week before there was a moment to where Lisa was learning the distances and, and, and kind of getting, getting a feel. And, and <laughs> I was a little stressed out because we, we had gone on the curb a time or two and, there were some walls really closing in and, and, and there were different roundabouts coming. I was trying to navigate and there was a lot going on. And so, so at the time I, I think I said, you know, it's, it's really kind of stressful over here on this side of the car. And Lisa looked at me like, she didn't say anything, but like, really, really? Like, like try being in this seat, try being in this seat right? So I'm like, okay. So I kind of parked that being like, you know, and then what, what was fascinating is when, when in that moment, Lisa got it like yeah. instantly, like, oh. Like, I, I, I get what you're saying now that it's, it's a different kind of stress, but it, it, that, that sometimes you don't realize what someone else is feeling yeah. being in that other seat, right? There's another, another lesson learned. but then, you know, I thought that was fascinating that you got in that instant. You're like, oh, instant. And then I, I felt so it. bad that I didn't fully appreciate what you were going through when you were going through it. And I don't think it was until later when you drove without me in the car, um, later on a couple of days later. Yeah. That, that I went, kind of appreciated oh, well, the other side. Yeah. yeah. So that, that was really, really interesting to kind of different, different, but appreciate that, that there was sort of stress or, or, or different emotions from both sides of the, the, the driver's side. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was an interesting moment. That, that, that was wild. I pulled, I pulled myself out of it. It took you a little minute. You, you were, you got it, it together. Yeah. I didn't know, but I didn't know. I, I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. Are you okay? Until you said no. I'm like, Okay. I, I, I was not okay. okay. Yeah. I was not okay. Okay. <laughs> so All right, well, that that was that was that moment. And so I drove. You drove for the the, the rest. Thank of goodness. The time. Yeah. yeah. So we went from um. So that next morning we we had the ill. <laughs> it wasn't an ill fated hike up Terra Hill. It was just the wrong hill. It was a beautiful. It was hike, a beautiful. And we had hill. a wonderful time. It was time. just not the one that we thought that we were. We had going a wonderful to time. So we'll get back around to Hill of Terra later. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it was absolutely beautiful. But we drove from there down to Cashel. Cashel, yeah. And the, look, the rock of Cashel. Of Cashel. And again, this was ruins of of a castle. The Another castles castle. start looking a little different in Ireland than they did in Scotland. Also, um, like a cathedral. I don't know if it was a cathedral or an abbey that that was. That was there, Abby, I think. Um, but gorgeous again. 
predominantly ruins. I think there was mm -hmm. a little chapel and learning center that that was part of the abbey that could be used for things now, but but for the most part, ruins. Gorgeous the scenery. Oh my gosh! And I thought it was interesting um, that they called it the Rock of Cashel versus the, a castle. So so the the standard to call something a castle must be different in Ireland than Scotland because pretty much everything in in, in Scotland that might be a castle was a castle. They were it was pretty loose with the term. It was a little loose. If it was a rock that looked interesting, it was a castle. It was a castle rock. <laughs> Just, Ireland was a little stricter in what they called the castle. So this was the rock of Cashel, but it was basically a castle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just for clarification. Yeah. So, and it was it was cool. It was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So we went from there to um, a place that I had very much looked forward to visiting. The city yeah, of too. Kilkenny. Me too. Me too. And it turns out like my favorite restaurant in Tulsa is is Kilkenny's, which mm -hmm. is a little pub restaurant. Been there for your birthday. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of my go-to place mm -hmm. when I go back to Tulsa. And what I didn't appreciate until we went there after we got back was that there's all this information about the town of Kilkenny in their menu that I had never paid attention to before. I just I didn't I didn't know Kilkenny was a real place. I, I didn't I, I didn't know. So anyway, we end up in Kilkenny. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite days in Ireland, I think. It yeah. was amazing. Yeah, maybe me too. I mean, there was a lot to see um, in Kilkenny and, and the Kilkenny Castle mm -hmm. and the cathedral there. Yeah. Just beautiful. Um, that was that. Was that where the Medieval Mile was? Was in Kilkenny? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Medieval Mile was in Kilkenny. Okay. Um, but, you know, really old history. I mean, you know, the, the place where we had dinner that night, Kai Tellers Inn yeah, was, right. um, it had been an establishment there since 1324. I mean, we're talking old, old. The streets, absolutely adorable. Um, little shops and pubs and restaurants and more shops and more shops and, you know, narrow cobblestone. I just, I, there I, was so much character to the town. I almost felt like if you had one place to go in Ireland, just one place, I would, I would recommend Kilkenny because there's a lot of everything there i mean it's not the we'll talk about dublin and galway and the big city stuff but i mean they're like you said they're they're the pubs the restaurants the shops the nightlife we'll talk about but it, it's just it was a really really kind of preserved um in time kind mm -hmm. of kind of uh, and i yeah. loved the fact that we parked the car <laughs> and we walked everywhere and we, walked. we just walked everywhere and so we ended up staying at a place called um the celtic house b and b Mm -hmm. And this was one, sometimes when I'm doing trip planning, if I'm in booking.com or something and I get goosebumps, when I look at a, at a listing, I'm like, okay, well, that's the place. And that was how it was with this particular location, you know, yeah. goose, gooseies. And I'm like, okay, that that's it. So we stayed there. Well, before, well, go ahead. We can talk about the Smith, Smithix, Smith, 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 Wicks, Smithix. <laughs> Who knows? The, the beer joint. The beer joint. So beer we still unfair how you pronounce it. I think depending on what part of the world you are in, you pronounce it differently. But um, <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of like Guinness. Ireland's known for Guinness. Well, Smithix, I'm going to call it Smithix. Smithix. Smithix has is, is been around for a long time as well. And it, it was they actually had their Dublin's there. first ale. Yeah. And turns out it's my favorite beer. Yeah. I did not realize until we started planning this trip that it was actually brewed in Kilkenny, that this mm -hmm. is the birthplace of this particular beer. So I was, I was very excited. We're walking down the street. Like we go and we visit the cathedral and we're walking down the street and boom, there it is. There's, there's the brewery. And it was, we had a beer there. The reason I wanted to point that out there and it'll come back later is um, so we're at, we're at Smithix and, and again, we're sitting there, we're sitting there talking and I'm talking to, I don't know if it's the owner or, or somebody at the establishment. We said, Hey, look, we're thinking about coming for live music later. Where do we go? And he looks up on the wall, and I can't remember the name of the place. It was called John Clears. John Clears, I think. Like well, we might have a picture of it. And he goes, "I know the owner here. They have every Monday night, which is a Monday. We have, they have like a how many years? Was it? They've been doing this for thirty years. Every Monday night, thirty for years. Thirty years. So we're gonna tell the whole story in a minute. But but he says, "Go check it out." And I'm I was like, okay. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, all right, I know the place. He knows. Okay, got it. Yeah, but I never would have known that if if because there's you know I don't know 20, 30 pubs there, so you don't know really know where to go. So I'm like, okay, got it. And so we went on about our way, but that will come we, back later. We went about our way. I gotta say, possibly best beer I've ever had in my life, right there at that at that brewery. It for me, between that and and better. Guinness at the Guinness factory mm -hmm. was, that, was that was good too, phenomenal. Yeah, that right. Was... So between those two, those were amazing yeah. beers. Yeah, we drank yeah. we drank a lot of beer in Ireland. There's more beer drinking. I drank a lot of. 
shouldn't say much alkaline drink, but there was <laughs> more Scott or more whiskey, Scott ish whiskey, whiskey with without an e scotch there in scotland see a lot of whiskey there but ireland's more of a beer place well they also have lots of whiskey, have whiskey. and stuff yeah. but but the pub environment i think lends itself well to to beer a pint a pint as you were as it were yes so kilkenny was beautiful we yes, went through ma'am. you know walked through the streets ended up I, it was important to me to have dinner at kytellers inn um and the reason that it was kind of meaningful and relevant to me is because the original proprietor, I guess, Alice Kaiteller. That's right. um, There's a story like she's, she's significant in history in the sense that she um, had been tried for being a witch and um, she was very wealthy, had had four husbands. They all seem to mysteriously pass away, which could be the reason that she was tried for being a witch. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was she had a lot of money and she was really well connected. So she was tried, she was found guilty, and she was going to be burned at the stake. Well, she uh, managed to get out of town. I mean, she had friends in powerful places, and they you know helped her escape. But the angry mob um, demanded justice. So unfortunately, uh, a woman by the name of Petronella, I believe, uh, who was her, like her handmaid, her, her, yeah. um, was burned at the stake in her stead. Mm-hmm. And so she was the first woman in Ireland burned at the stake on charges of heresy in 1324. And so that just that history, I, I want, I wanted, I, I don't, not that I wanted to experience the history, but that history was part of, yeah. part of the story of this town that, that I wanted to learn a bit more about. So that was one of the reasons that we went to to that particular establishment. Uh, had a great dinner there. Fantastic. Um, yeah. And then ended up coming back later. We walked through the streets, you know, did some some wandering around. This is a guy who knows me, <laughs> which I appreciate so much. We're wandering through. Oh, and he was yeah. like, hey, how about coming in this bookstore? And I'm like, what? <laughs> What? Yeah, yes, so we're walking yes. around. It's probably five o'clock or so, and things are are maybe getting ready to close. The shops start to close, and I think we had an early dinner. And and uh, yeah, there was a cute little independent little bookstore, little Irish bookstore there. So we walked over, and um, I like bookstores as well. And, yes, so but the cool thing that he did, he starts building stacks of books, and he brings them over to me. And he was just like, "I just saw these, and I thought you might like them." Just looking for books that he thought might pique my interest. I thought that was incredibly sweet. Yeah, that that was yeah. that was incredibly sweet. So little things like that, yeah, went a long way. But one of the wild things about you know when we when we were doing like last week in in the podcast, we talked about Scotland and and some of the past life memories I had had of Scotland. Mm-hmm. One of the things that was wild about being in Kilkenny is that as we were walking through some of these narrow streets um, with the little, it, it was more the alleys with the the shops on the alleys and the cobblestone. Very much, yeah. um, I looked down one street and I was just hit with, with a recognition and it felt like a past life remembrance that was mm-hmm. happening what like you said right at the time. there. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Whoa. Um, I don't know if it was that exact spot, but, but there was something about that that sparked the memory in me. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a memory of when I would have been eight years old, right. Previous okay. lifetime, maybe around the age of eight, but there were large men running through the city with um, torches. So mm-hmm. they were setting things on fire. I don't know if they were looking for witches. I just knew that I was in danger and I needed to hide. Hmm. You know, that's the memory I had. And I remember hiding behind um, like a, a 55 gallon whiskey barrel, you know, just a, yeah, a big wooden said. whiskey barrel and them coming at me and me willing myself to be invisible and um, them looking right where I was and not seeing me hmm. and going on, going on their way. And it was almost like willing myself to be invisible saved my life in that particular hmm. moment. And that was just such a, um, you know, I, I'd had the memory before, but it all came rushing back when when we saw this particular little alley. So that was that was wild, and that was a memory that um, I truly believe back in 2019 kept me safe hmm. from potential. She'd had harm. that memory before. Yeah, yeah. 
And then I, I know you've talked, you know, related to your situation in Egypt when you were right. in Egypt talking about right that. when there was a, a moment when I needed to be invisible and um, remembered that memory and I, I wasn't seen. It, it kept you safe. <laughs> and then did. it's interesting yeah. that, that that same memory came back to you, mm-hmm. even though you weren't in danger at the time, came back to you when you were in that in that particular location, which was very vivid. You described it as very vivid. Yeah. And I remember when I had the memory the first time. Ireland was the place where I thought it was. I just mm. had no idea. I don't know time frame or anything like that. But, you know, some of these locations, if our souls are familiar with it, you know, can spark these kinds of, of memories or um, connections that, you know, places here mm. in, in the U.S., for example, I, I don't, I haven't had that same kind of past mm. life memory sparking connection mm. with. I don't know that, you know. Maybe that's interesting. Yeah. So anywho, yeah. Um, so that was kind of, kind of wild. We, we walked back. It was raining like crazy at this point. Yeah. By this point it was raining. Yeah. It was raining like crazy. We went back. This was after dinner. Um, when we were at Kytellers, they said, Hey, we've got live music starting at eight. Yeah. You want to come back. And so we walked back and it wasn't crazy raining yet, but I was worn out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was really tired so we're at the bed and breakfast at this point we've gone back to the bed which wasn't too far it was a little bit of a walk but not terrible three quarters of a mile a mile something like that something like that and um i just wanted to lay down for a minute my feet hurt you know and but i knew jim man you wanted to see live music more than anything i think that's a passion i was pretty fired up to do it and especially in ireland and i heard a lot about it and um so I, yeah, I kind of wanted to do it, but it was, it was pouring down rain. I mean, it was really raining and Lisa was exhausted and it, you know, it was a walk back and it was dark outside at this point. Yeah. So, you know, we were kind of talking about, do we go back? And and I, I can tell she was not, not super keen on the idea. I was like, okay, well we can, we can, we can just kind of stay here if you just want to stay here. And and I think you kind of knew. I said, let's give it 10 minutes. Let's just give it 10 minutes. Yeah. And within 10 minutes, the rain stopped. The rain stopped. The rain stopped. And Jim's like, but you're tired. I said, but you're in Ireland and Kilkenny apparently has one of the best Irish music scenes in the whole, whole country. We got to go. Yeah. And so which was, she's on. Which was amazing that you did. Because I think I, I think internally you were probably ready to call it, I think. But it ended up being one of, I it mean, was, a magnificent We'll talk about night. how maybe the best night of music in the entire trip. Um, it was magical. But it was just interesting that in that moment, I think it was just ready and i and i think it was you i think you tell me you kind of looking at me and saying it's something really important to you i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna do this and i i kind of feel like you did that for me the last thing on earth i was gonna do was deny you a night of irish music in kilkenny because i was tired yeah but at that but at that talk about gratitude and, mm-hmm. and you talked a little bit about earlier about being grateful for my navigation i was just incredibly grateful that that you um you were willing to do that because I, I don't know if I hadn't been there or hadn't been as exciting to me about that you would have done it. But um, we'll talk about how it, how it ended up. But music was freaking awesome. It was so fun. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, such a good time. it's in two parts. So the yeah. first part, so I, I get really giddy talking about this part, but the, okay. So the first part was we go back to Kai Tellers mm-hmm. and um, it's, it's um, traditional Irish music, but, but pretty upbeat. So that it was a lot of fun. So they were mm-hmm. really good beat. The whole bar, when you go to these places, Everyone is singing. They know the songs. They're doing traditional Irish songs. Everybody knows them and you don't know them, but you're excited. And, they're fast and there's and they're, fiddles. And there's <laughs> fiddles going and it's just energetic and it was it was fantastic. So we're, we're just loving it. And the bar's packed. And so we go back, we we drink a pint. And, and so that was great. And then- It was so fun. It was so amazing. Fun. So we're loving it. We're having a great time. And then the music stop was about 10 o'clock. 1030, something like that. Yeah. yeah so, we're, so we're still pretty fired up and it's like, well, do we want to go somewhere else? And- so we walk outside. I think the rain had stopped. Yeah, maybe a little drizzly. We walked. So again, we were kind of debating: do we want to? Do we want to go back to the the bed and breakfast? Well, let's just look around a little bit. And then for whatever reason, that that sign, the the what was the name of the place again? John? I think it was John John Clears. It, it it clicked in my mind. I'm like, oh wait a minute. The guy I talked to earlier today said they have live music. So let's wander over there. Um, so can I tell this part? Yes. Okay. So. So we wander over and the first thing is like, like I try to open the door and, and I thought the door was stuck. So I'm trying to open it. I'm like, I, I think it's closed. Like there's nobody in here. And then, so, but it turns out there's just people jammed against the door. So I'm shoving my way in and like, everybody's just kind of looking at me. So, okay. So we wander in and, and it's not very 
big. It's not huge. Like some of the pubs that are really big, it's kind of small. And there are musicians right at the front. So right as you walk in the door, they're sitting right next to the front door. Like, And, and you're like, kind of, how's it going? And you just walk past and we kind of walk back to the back and and then the magic starts. And so we're just sitting there and, and so they're playing and we're listening. It's, oh, it's okay. It's pretty good music. And then all of a sudden the, the guy just gets up like like the guy and and walks over to another guy sitting down and hands him a guitar. Well, I had seen him earlier at I don't even know where, but somewhere I'd seen him before. So he's like, "Okay," and he takes the guitar and just starts playing. And he's amazing. And he's just going off and he's playing a couple songs and it's crazy and then so um then someone else gets up and starts singing some some traditional and I, and I'm mesmerized at this point because this is really cool. So then at some point, I, this goes on for a while. At some point, our our um, we I don't think we got a beer yet. We were we were just kind of focused on this. The our waitress comes over and takes our order, and she's a little, little French girl and um, gives us gives us our beers. We're like thank you very much, and and she goes, "Oh, I'll be right back." Okay, and we look up and here's the little waitress at the front singing a cappella, beautiful in French. In French. Beautiful. Beautiful. And the entire bar, which is which is loud and noisy and everything, dead silent. Yeah. Dead silent. Like you can she hear a pin drop. She was amazing. And then so she finishes up. And then at some point, the guy that I've been talking to right next to me, he's like, Oh, okay, I'll be right back. And they give him the guitar and he goes up and he starts playing in in Italian. He's singing in Italian. In Italian. And an incredible guitarist. Yeah. And and then I think as as I think as the French girl was singing, the guy right next to me, that some older gentleman started singing, like standing stoic, singing the words, knowing the words. It was it was And he was phenomenal. And he was phenomenal. Yeah. I'm like, who is this guy? And and it was just it was the most magical, organic experience I, I've I've ever been a part of. That that just the music was every person that stood up and sang or played an instrument was mesmerizing and yeah. and how the bar would just get quiet just get quiet and you'd hear it was magical so we would have missed that so that that from everything we saw and there's more good music to come and we'll talk about all, all that it, it was just so organic is the best word i can think of because it, it just kind of came it wasn't planned mm -hmm. they just should have showed up and started doing their thing and we were i don't know what was your impression i i, I loved it what i loved most because i can't sing along i don't know any of the words right <laughs> yeah, i'm a girl who either. needs to sing along but my very favorite part was your reaction. So watching you watch what was unfolding. Really? Uh, that brought me so much joy because you, it, it was like, it was like one of the highlights of the trip for you. And just seeing you be just so filled with life over that experience, mm. that, that was, that was magic to me. And I, I would have I would have felt horrible had I denied you mm. that, but man, I got so much out of that by watching you experience it. Mm. I, that was a highlight for me too, just your reaction. Cool. It was magical. Yeah. It was it was I was really I think I don't even know what my expression was, but I was blown away and then kind of blown away again. And I was like, okay, yep, I'm just I don't know what to do at this point. I'm just yeah. gonna be here. It was cool. It was cool. That was cool, Kenny. That that was cool, Kenny. We walked back to the bed and breakfast, um, got a night's sleep. The next morning, we go down for breakfast, hmm. and um, I I saw the owner out of the corner of my eye hmm. the day before, and I thought she's got a story, and there's something special about her. But you know, we 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 were off. We we weren't in the mood to talk right then. We were in the mood to go explore. The day before. Yeah, because we were in a hurry. We yeah. kind of got there late. We needed to get out. So so we kind of skedaddled out. We didn't talk to we her. We kind of hit things before they closed. Yeah, but yeah. the next morning. But the next morning, we're sitting at breakfast. And I noticed on her, on, on the, the mantle of the fireplace, mm -hmm. all these books by the same author. And then some, some like certificates on the wall, like of awards or honors, you know, that same name. And so she came over. And so I asked her if that was her and if those were her books. And it turns out, indeed, it was, she was the author. Angela Byrne. Um, she, and the artist. Had, and the artist, incredible mm -hmm. painter, uh, author, award-winning author, actually, and also the owner of the Celtic House B&B. And so we had a, a delightful conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to her about being a guest on this podcast, so I'm hopeful that that within the near future, we can make that happen. But she was just an absolute delight. It felt like a kindred spirit sort of, sort of thing. So 
Jim buys me the trilogy of her books because he's amazing like that. I was up trying to finish getting ready and get packed and he's buying books and getting them signed because she did sign them for kind of guy. Yeah. And and what's what's neat is uh, you know, each of the places we stayed was was interesting and unique in its own right. And some of the places you know, we talked about, you know, castles were for the historic significance. Some were just the view, the beautiful view of the ocean. Th this was and, and it was a nice place. It was fine. Um but it was really that experience with the author that next morning that just set it apart. So yeah. um, it was really a cool experience because of that. Mm -hmm. And to Lisa's credit, like say the day before, I was kind of just ready to, I went up for a conversation then just go on. And she's the one that really sought her out. And, had a, and I think she did you too and made that connection, which made that special. So um, yeah, that was that, cool. that was beautiful. That and was I'm, cool. I'm very grateful for that. After that, we went to the Kilkenny Castle and... Um, and visited that. Did we do that? No, we did that. The night we did before. them that for. I think we we, we took night. off to Killarney. Yeah. So I think I'm I think I'm wrong about Rock of Cashel. We actually did that after after Kilkenny. So instead of in between, we did that after Kilkenny. So what the heck was that that we do, saw do, before? Do you know what will be help, would be helpful? A spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's it's hard to keep the beautiful things straight right so yeah, yeah. we did rock we know we did it sometime but yeah. I, don't, I don't know when it was on the sequence. drive from kilkenny to clarney okay we did rock of cashel it was, so just it was gorgeous. That, just yeah. edit that and put that yeah i'll later. put the i'll put the picture where it actually belongs yeah yeah so and then we get to clarney and i had heard good things about clarney too mm -hmm. and we knew we needed to, to be there by a certain time because we had tickets mm -hmm. to see a show in Killarney that night. It was called the Celtic Steps. It was. And it was. yeah, so we knew we needed to be there in time to have dinner and get to the show. Well, we did not go to Cork. We did not go to Blarney Castle. We did not go kiss the Blarney Stone. For those that are wondering, yeah. if you're we... in suspense, the answer is no, yeah. we did not. We considered it. So if you kiss the Blarney Stone, you supposedly are gifted the gift of gab. Which... And we thought, good Lord. <laughs> I, Along those lines, yeah, we figured yeah. Um, we were we were we were well equipped with Gab, well endowed, well endowed, well endowed with Gab. With Gab. So, so we didn't think that was as necessary, and I don't think we missed anything by missing the Blarney Stone. Yeah, k kissing a rock that a whole bunch of other people have kissed in this day and age. Uh, maybe we go back someday and see maybe, it. Yeah. Maybe I've, I've heard that it, it gets mixed reviews, but um, I wouldn't have traded any of our experiences yeah. for that. For Thank sure. Thank you. Thank you. So we we get to Kilkenny and or to Killarney, and. Um, it was so beautiful. Oh, this, yeah. this is one town I wish we would have had a lot more time in Me too. Um, and one that I would definitely go back to. This is a town I'd love to like host a workshop in. The The place where we stayed was oh. so, it was the Loch Lean Country House. Oh Gorgeous. my gosh. It was so On the water. unbelievably beautiful. Oh. The rooms, the views, the restaurant. Oh man. Everything about it was just, um, just amazing. I wish we'd affordable. had more time. But absolutely amazing. But before we got there, we went to Ross Castle. We did. And yeah. That, castle. that was a great castle. Ross Castle. You loved great. Ross Castle. I love Ross Castle. We yeah. toured, toured the tower. That was the one I toured. You hadn't toured. You didn't tour that one. I did not. And then we went on the boat trip. Yeah. Was it before or after the tour? Uh, it was before the tour. Before the tour. So we went on the boat trip. And um, it's a little lake, and it was a fun little trip around the lake. And so we really enjoyed that. We got that. to see the ruins of an abbey that was on the shore. We, when it, we were going to... <laughs> we had talked about taking oh, a kayak God. or a canoe to just get to yeah let's just go get a canoe and then we get out there and the waves are massive yeah, so we're kind of like yeah probably not but glad we're not canoe weather yeah um but what was what was interesting for for the, the the history buffs out there so i'd seen all the scottish castles this was kind of a, one of my first we saw kilkenny but then this really kind of talked about the uh oh gosh what they call it the the, the tower houses. Mm -hmm. So tower houses in Ireland, and I'll talk more about that later, but there were thousands of them that were built um, for the landowners to protect their lands from sort of rival neighbors. And, and mm -hmm. so there was a lot of infighting and and um, between the various landowners. And so these became really, really significant. So Ross showed, um, it was in ruins, but it kind of showed the different ways in which um, one of those um, tower houses worked and then mm -hmm. later we got to see one even even more up close we'll talk about but yeah. it was cool and it was right on the water he, he came out of there just totally ecstatic and and excited about, about the engineering and like the the strategic decisions that were made for oh protective purposes okay so back to back to sieging a castle right i mean 
this thing would have been tough to siege. And it was cool. Like the steps go go counterclockwise. So if you're going up, right, and you try to swing a sword with your right hand, okay, you hit the wall. And it because most people were right-handed. Well, coming down, you were free to swing. So they designed those stairs intentionally for defensive purposes. They made the first few steps uneven so that attackers coming up the steps would get kind of off balance. I'm like, that's really clever engineering. Yeah. Think about those things, right? There are other things that are a little more gruesome that I won't go into, but they're, they're, the, 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 the design was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. You were so excited when we left there. It was all those was, little details. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. So then we had an incredible dinner at the Lachlan country. Oh, house. it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. It was delicious. And there we went the... to the Celtic steps. It was so fun. It was kind of like river dance meets Branson only with really good Irish music and the dancers were incredible. And it, I don't know. it was great. So I was, I will say I was skeptical because they brought in massive tour bus. I mean, it's designed tour buses are coming in. It, it did. You, you kind of got that Branson feel. And, and, and again, we specifically wanted this trip to be more about adventure and, and, and kind of anti tour bus approach. So I was a little skeptic and I was wrong. Like I thought it was fantastic. I thought the musicians were wonderful, the dancers, all of it. We just were all in on. I mean, it was really, really good. And we had bought the tickets way before we yeah. left. And I remember buying the tickets. You were like, yeah, no. Yeah. I'm like, oh, just trust me. Because I was kind of more, let's just go randomly find music, which we did. And it was amazing versus something organized. But this was in its own right, amazing. And great. one of those things that I'm pretty sure would have been sold out if we would have waited until the end. It, so would, have, it would have for sure been sold out. It was out. totally worth it. If you go, like, I hope my mom has a chance to see it. My yeah, mom, I think for all ages, this. yeah. And it's a good, yeah. it, and it's variety in the sense that they show you all kinds of different things. It's not just one thing. Yeah. Good history, like mm -hmm. good folklore and, and just cultural insights. It. Yeah. It was, it was loved super it. cool. So Celtic steps gets a yay from us. Thumbs up. So the real reason we came down tour and we're staying in Killarney that night is that the next morning. That's right. We were, we we were strategically were driving, located. We were driving to Port McGee mm -hmm. to get on a boat mm -hmm. to head out to Skellig Michael, mm -hmm. which happened to be the place where um, they found Luke Skywalker in a couple of the more recent Star Wars movies. We called it Skywalker Island. That they get very mad when we they do. do we didn't say it out loud. Yeah, yeah. But, just but to was, each other. It was so. easier than Skellig Michael, which you had to think about a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it was it was in fact that that scene at the end of not. Oh, there's no spoilers, so turn away if you've not seen the Force Awakens. The or Force the Awakens. Last Jedi. Yeah, whichever the names are the the newer later Star Wars. But yeah. turn away. But it's at the end when they find Luke. And you see this beautiful island. And then in the, the second one after that, there's a lot of scenes shot where they're in the little huts. And I think there's there's a lot going on. Those are real. Like those are those are actually there. So, so we wanted to go see this. Yeah, I did not know actually until we started planning this trip that that particular island was not CGI. <laughs> I didn't know it was a real place. I didn't know that it was actually off the coast of Ireland. So when I found it, I'm like, oh my God, we've got to go. I'm like, hey, Jim. That was it. That's what you said. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. And I'm like, can, can, hey, what, what do you think? Would you like to do this? He's like, uh, yes, I'm totally in. Yeah. So we're driving down. We were supposed to meet a boat at like, I don't know, nine o'clock, maybe. Nine o'clock, I think. And, head and it's off. an hour drive from the, uh, at, at least, well, it was, <laughs> it was hour 45. Those were some okay. of the sketchier roads that, it was a little well, sketchy. They, well, yeah. Um, but we got there. We got there and it was raining and was. there's concern that the island itself is a, is a world heritage site. And it's a good, probably hour and a half boat ride off the coast. I think something like that. And maybe an hour. And um, it's a World Heritage Site, and it's actually the location of a monastery, like a, a 14th century or earlier. What, yes, what yes, I think so. It what we been even earlier. What was fascinating about this, we didn't we didn't know at the time. We we were we just thought it was beautiful and had a Star Wars connection. And we thought oh, we got to go. What I didn't appreciate, at least, is in Scotland we talked about it, Iona. We'll talk about the book Kells. That here on Skellig Michael, this monastery was also connected. Yeah, so it was way older than what I just said. It was more like nine, 
eight hundreds. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But and and I don't I don't remember all the connections. But that you you again had monks living here, um, working on on different books, and they would basically live in in extremely difficult, humble environments. Yeah. You know, they talk about them walking down six hundred steps. Um, in, into this ocean to try and fish and then walking back again and bringing the fish. But, and having to terrace the land that they could to try to yeah. grow crops and or grow some food. Um, the beehive huts, the stone beehive huts that you'll see in the Star Wars movies are actually where the, the monks lived. And there would be 12 on the island at a time. And I was so excited to 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 go visit. Um, getting up to the top was was going to be a challenge uh, because it's a incredibly it, but... steep. And um, but to me, that's the kind of stuff I mean, you know, that's the kind of stuff yeah. that that I, I just love. And so we're pumped up and ready to go. Yeah. I am. And it was raining and there's possibility because oftentimes if the weather is such that the boats can't land, because it's not like there's a boat dock, really. I mean, there's, it's very, they're maybe very, on it. I, not it, much it's of one. really sketchy to, to land a boat and let people get on and off. Mm. And the numbers of people who can go on the island on any one day is like seriously limited. Mm. I think it's like 180 people a day is all that can go on the island and, that's right. to preserve it as a heritage site. So there was a possibility it was going to get canceled. So mm -hmm. at seven o'clock, they didn't say it was a go, but they said we haven't canceled yet. So we get to Port McGee and um, we get the message that the the seas were such that it was it was rough enough that the, the people who kind of guard the island had decided not to allow boats to land that day. So it was canceled. Yeah. Sort of. So then I get another email that says, but hey. If you want to go look at the island, we'll take you out on a boat to look at it. We just can't go. You can't. You can't land, but we'll go take a look at it. And we're like, well, sure, let's go do that. Yeah, so let's do it. So that was the plan, and so we we got to stay and have a little breakfast. And now, what 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 we didn't compute at the time is if somebody says, "Hey, the seas are too rough to go on to land on an island," and then later said, "Hey, do you want to come on the boat anyway?" Think, think about that. So pause and think what a, what life on a boat's going to be like. It's 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 how far to the island? It's like an hour and a half to get to the island. So you're on a boat. It's a little bitty boat for an hour and a half with the girl who's motion sick. Really rough seas, motion sickness. So that's the picture. And we were like, yeah, sure, we're all in. Let's go see it. Let's go. Let's do this. And it's raining like crazy. And we get on the boat. We get on the boat. And you know what? I was one of the lucky few. Who got my very own personal plastic peak pail? You ever, everyone, so you see, you get on yeah. and you see these old buckets that are stacked. And there's one guy whose job, not to get, to get too detailed here, but there's he's, his job is to take care of the buckets. So to Lisa's credit, okay, it was really number one. It was really rough. It was it was really really tough. And it was funny because there were there was like a young couple and and they were all excited and energetic. And and then you know, 15 minutes in, I noticed she's a little less energetic. <laughs> And then she's sitting next to me and then she's completely pale. And then five minutes later, she's got the puke bucket and she's done for the day, you know, mm -hmm. and it's okay. So much for enthusiasm. And, <laughs> and so Lisa's hanging in there though. I mean, and, and by this time, so more hard. than half of the people on the boat are utilizing, let's just call them their pails. Let's okay. just leave it at that. The plastic pails. We don't need to be more descriptive. So you're utilizing the plastic pails and again, you've got an attendant. Working with them on that, and Lisa's not hanging the in there. Not best job ever. I'm going to say no. Not yeah. not not really what you yeah. aspire for. So um, nice guy though. Beautiful view though. Yeah, beautiful view. <laughs> beautiful Other view. than the pale, I mean, when you're looking out. Um, so so he's like Lisa, or he didn't say. Well, he might have said Lisa. He said, you know, ma'am. I'm not sure what he said. Saying in Irish, Lassie. That would have been <laughs> Scotland. Just look at the look at the look at the horizon. Keep your eye on the land. Which you were doing great. You were such I a was trooper. trying so hard. I was she trying was to ground so good. And to, to use all my energy. You hung in there to, to until until I couldn't anymore. until you couldn't. Yeah, five times. <laughs> and then five we'll, times I couldn't. <laughs> and the island was beautiful. And both of the there was there's a big island and a little island. And then we saw dolphins. We saw birds on the island. It was like, it was, oh, the little Skellig. So there's two. There's yeah. Skellig Michael after Archangel Michael, by the way, um, which is the bigger island. And then little Skellig. And it's a bird sanctuary. I don't think humans are allowed on that island, but they would, they said that there would be like yeah, 40 to so. 70,000 birds. Maybe it's crazy. It was just, 4, just surrounded by birds. Yeah, yeah. Wild number. Oh, and on Skellig, <laughs> on Skellig Michael, there are times when they have puffins like tons and tons of puffins. puffins and what we learned the porg in 
like the Force Awakens and, and the Last Jedi, the Porg were actually created because they couldn't get rid of all the puffins. And so there were times when they'd have to shoo the puffins <laughs> out of the way. So they created the Porg and then just CGI them. They CGI over the puffins because it was easier than getting rid of the puffins. That was so fun to or learn. Star Wars trivia. Yeah. So, um, so. so we, we, it was, a, it was a, it was a, the dolphins were cool. The dolphins were cool. And yeah. yeah. The do- yeah, the dolphins were cool. Um, I was not feeling so great at this point. And how you managed not to get sick was really impressive to me because um that you were super supportive. There was no way I was gonna deny you that that experience. And I didn't want to deny myself either. I mean, yeah. that was a story to tell. Yeah, you hung in there. You it. you yeah. hung in there and it, it was beautiful and we got to see it and I really enjoyed it. I I I thought it was really great. And um and the truth is once you actually just let yourself barf you know i mean the truth is you feel better I, not completely 100 percent better but i did feel better maybe, after i just maybe there's a lesson learned. sometimes you just got to clear clear the junk lessons learned. Or the breakfast. See, we're giving all these away whatever yeah on. okay so all right so, so and that was skeleton Skellig- 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 yeah. yeah yeah that was that was super it. cool uh just so you know on may 4th they do have a big festival at port mcgee and uh in fact you know they're yeah, they have a big Star Wars. Festival. So, so one interesting yeah. thing that morning, and I think it was that morning after we found out that it had gotten canceled, we we were kind of thinking what our next step was, and we didn't know. And um, um, we recorded a little video and talked about, and and it's one of my favorite sayings that Lisa has is is this or something better. And we didn't know what that meant because we were really excited to go to to, to the island, and, and months we'd been kind of talking about it and planning it, and we were disappointed we didn't go for sure. But but you know it was just that that approach. Okay, well something better is meant for us, mm-hmm. and the reality is the way the timing would have worked that if we'd have gone on the island, it was a pretty long day. We wouldn't have got back till late. We had a long drive. We were headed to the cliffs of Moor um, that evening, and it would have been a really long drive. We probably wouldn't have got there before dark and and we would have had to kind of do all the next day so we'll find out in a minute how it worked out but it was just interesting that we grounded in that moment we kind of looked at each other and rather than just being super upset we just said okay well that means the universe has something better for us planned we just don't know what it is and then as the day unfolded we learned what it was yeah so the the gist i got was that being near the island energetically was enough i didn't necessarily need to be on the island to get the energetic hit and we also realized later that had we walked the 667 steps or whatever up and then also back down that with all the other hiking and stuff we did that day we would have been it it, it would not have gone well right i don't think so we ended up getting we ended up leaving port mcgee earlier mm-hmm. than we would have planned yeah so. Yeah. So we got to go see the island, went out on the boat, got sick. That was just wonderful. Get back. I I did have to lay down for a little while. I just laid down. We took a little on, break. On a bench. A I'm like, break. I just need on to get my sea legs and, and calm myself. Um, so I did lay down for a little bit. I think we had lunch there. That was nice. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And then got back in the car. And quite frankly, um, uh motion sickness from the I think I was already a bit motion sick from the drive. And then there was the motion sickness of the water and then getting back in the car for another drive. Not ideal. Yeah. But um, hey, you know, whatever. We, we you were awesome. Rolling. You were a trooper. Yeah, we so we rolling. kept going and our next stop was basically the cliffs of. Oh, we took another. Didn't we take another ferry? I think we did. I think yeah. that, that we did take a ferry. Which was brilliant because with, it, I just. Could, and we gotten that tip from somebody else too, yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah that, that was great. And it took some time off, off yeah. the driving and let me just kind of breathe give you a break yeah yeah so that was great so we end up getting to um uh liz canner liz canner liz canner to the atlantic view Mm bnb uh absolutely at you know the views uh, it was kind of the other side i guess of the atlantic more of a bay it was super cute we're on the west side yeah Yeah. and over by the cliffs of and i would have said cliffs of more but i guess they pronounce it moher moher more, 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 I don't, I don't more. Um, close some more, close some more. So at, normally you would have to pay 24 bucks a person or something to get in. I mean, it was something kind of expensive. Yeah. And it's, in. and it's kind of touristy actually. And there's a, a bunch of tour buses, tour buses and, and visitor center and, and somewhere, I don't even know, we got a tip to go at sunset yeah. and completely just 
coincidentally or maybe not coincidentally, it we just happened to get there right at a time where the sun was about to set. They'd close the visitor center. There was no cost to park. There was no cost got to enter. Got in for free. Walked over. There's all, there's no tourists there. I mean, there's just a few people walking around. And we watched the sunset and it was absolutely beautiful. Magical. And it was magical. And if and if we had made it on the island, yeah. we would not have gotten there then. It probably would have been late. We would have been exhausted. We might have tried to drive by the next day, but we got to just kind of meander around and really enjoy that moment yeah. of the sunset. It was it was absolutely beautiful. It was our something better. That was something better. It, it was, it, it was really better. was, really was magical. And that night after that, we we drove over to um was the little town um Coolin? no Doolin. 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 Doolin Doolin had a great dinner again he did. I had so much steak and Guinness pie <laughs> and there was music so- there was there was um live well, music and music in Doolin as live well. music and so that was that was fantastic and so we just had a really nice little yeah. you know evening more live music the cliffs the scenery just gorgeous um we got up the next day and I was kind of ready. We had, we knew we had quite a drive ahead of us going to, to Galway yeah. and I was kind of ready to roll. And Jim's like, Oh, but he took the car out that morning because we needed to pay we pay in, in, cash. in cash. And we had, we had all week and a half so far, we've had no cash on us at all. We were doing everything by credit card. And so um, you had to go out and find an ATM. So you were getting ready <laughs> and, and you're like, okay, you, you haven't got to drive any, how about you go? And, and interestingly, didn't want to go with me offered you go on your own i'm like sure that's fine see ya <laughs> see ya and so i go in search of money machine and and found that my gps led me astray three times there was no money machine where i went at all and so um i eventually and there's some deadline i don't remember why but there's some deadline we have to be back because the lady's going to leave for the day or something so i'm a little stressed out so, so i go around and and um went over the curb about four times <laughs> and got back and i was like here are your keys I'm done. I'm not driving. Not anymore. driving anymore. I'm fine. <laughs> I got it out of my system. Thank you very much. Here you go. So it worked out. I was denying him the fun. Yeah, because you felt bad. And, yeah. Because I, I kind of, I like, I like fast cars and, and maybe to drive a little fast sometimes or at least a little aggressively. And, 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 and so I thought, oh, this will be kind of fun going these roads. I was like, done. Oh. I'm out. I'm yeah. done. So that, that was a, le- a learning, a learning, learning experience. So, but while he was out, there, there was this rock shop that I, that was actually on the spreadsheet yeah. as something that I wanted to see, but I had said, you know, babe, how about we just, yeah, we're busy. Go. We got places let's to go. go. We're hit, we're run on timeline. We and it's go. like, you know, I just saw it. It's not that far out of the way. Let's stop. Let's go. Yeah. It won't take it long. One of the nicest rock shops I have ever seen. Yeah, was the amazing. crystals and the jewelry. And I mean, it was just one of the nicest. That little ones coffee I've shop in, in there too. Great. It was nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was fantastic. So anyway, thank you for Sure. I mean, we look out for each other. And uh, yeah. yeah, so thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, then we were driving and just stopped at this little visitor center in some random little town that I don't remember the name. Is of. this in the burn? Yeah, when we were getting ready to go into there. Yeah, and because it was because because we were driving and I and I I can't remember, but I'd, I'd seen something on a map. I was like, hey, why don't we just pull up here? And I think you look at me like, what, why, why do you want to stop? I'm like, truth is I, we needed to go to the bathroom. I think we had to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I think is what it was. We need to go to the bathroom. So I'm like, all right, we'll pull up here. This looks like, I think probably it was me that need to go. You're like, Literally. why are you stopping? Like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. So, so we pull off in this, in this little, sorry, right in front. Um, so, <laughs> so we pull off and, and find this cute little visitor center and more amazingness just yeah. randomly. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, you know, ruins of a church right nearby, incredible high crosses um, that were yeah. at like significant, uh, historically significant high crosses that had been inside this cathedral um, that it w- was now in ruins, but the crosses were being, were being preserved. Really gorgeous. Gorgeous. And the, la- the landscape, I mean, just the countryside. And, was and again, beautiful. seeing it in its natural environment, like you, you might see a little bit of this in museum somewhere, yeah. but it does not do justice. And it's a random pit stop yeah. that we just see yeah. this thing. It was crazy. Yeah. And nice, nice cats. And there were we, cats. we got good tips from the lady who was running the visitor center. So we did. Which, important tips. Important tips. Yes. Yeah, that will come in. So so we kind of said, okay, here's the direction we're going. And and we're in this place called the Burren, which is a really interesting landscape. The the a lot of the the land is covered with these really large rocks, really difficult to farm. And we were going to see, um, we said that uh, um, and you'll talk about it, um, kind of this very, very historic. 
portal or room? Portal tomb. Portal so, tomb. so there are these, what yeah. are they called? Um, do, Dolan, do, Dolman? Dol, Pole Dorman. Pole, Pole Dorman. We'll have to add, you'll have to add something. <laughs> say any of the stuff. But anyway, there, there are these like megalithic type structures, you know, stones. And um, again, one of those marbles, it's like how the heck back in, you know, 3600 BC, some of these, they say predate like Stonehenge and the, the pyramids and, and things like that, but that they were, um, that they were tombs. Mm -hmm. And um, some also would say energetic portal tombs. So it was known as like, this one was known as, as the portal tomb. Mm -hmm. And um, energetically, I could, I could feel that there was some, uh, some love to share there. We, there was some sorrow that needed yeah. to to be recognized and released and 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 love shared there. Yeah. Yeah. So you did that. Yeah. We went and you did that, and I picked flowers, and I got in trouble. For you did get in picking trouble. Picking flowers. So who knew? Um, <laughs> don't pick flowers if you go there. I'm just saying. Don't do it. Um, yeah. It's it's not good. So, but what was interesting is is the late when we were talking to the lady earlier. She we told her this was at the visitor center, and she said, you know, if you're up in that area anyway. Um, they do like um sheepdog trials, trials like exhibitions, exhibitions with border collies. Um, with border collies, if you happen to be up there, and I and I kind of like, oh, okay, well, you know, okay, and I just tucked it in the back of my mind. So we're driving up there, and we see a pull off to the place, which sounds kind of like maybe, maybe that's it, maybe not. Mm -hmm. So we go and we finish up, and we're like, you know, we're kind of hungry. There was a place to eat back at that where we pass, and mm -hmm. and and we so let's just go get some food. And, and so we go up there thinking we're going to go eat, and turns out it's the place where the sheepdog trials are. And turns out they do them twice a day. Turns out they're starting. Like, right. timing, it, perfect. Yeah. So I'm like, and and what's even better, there's a historic fort. A ring fort. Like a ring fort. Like, like, a, like a pref to, like, like before castle, like a pre-castle thing. So... So I'm like, all right. And so Lisa's walking up behind me. I'm like, all right, we'll take tickets for the dog show and for the, the castle. So it was amazing. So one of my favorite things the entire trip was watching those sheepdogs work. It was super cool. It was the coolest thing. It was super cool. They worked off, off whistle commands. Yeah. And so there were sheep there and and, and we were, were watching. These were the kind of sheepdog. Apparently our cattle are... Border collies. Border collies. Some of them are trained to, you know, herd with their eyes, and others are trained more like cattle, cattleish to to nip. Three of the four were more eye trained. There was one that was a bit of a rebel. It kept <laughs> yeah. getting yelled at by yeah. the trainer. The trainer was hilarious, by the way. So um, reminds me of my uncle Ken. I said he's, he's a lot like my uncle Ken. Yeah. And just hilarious. And um, that was so much fun. Yeah. Watching these dogs eye down the sheep, like they eyeball the sheep, and they. Do with their dogs. And people were wondering, you know, are are the, are the sheep scared? And and the guy said, you know, it doesn't make any sense to inspire fear in the sheep. That's that's not helpful for anyone. So the sheep have a, a healthy respect for the dogs, but they really try to create an environment where it's not fear oriented. And I I appreciated I, that. I was somebody asked that question. That was a great. I, I, it was a great question, and I I thought it was fascinating. Mm -hmm. And um, that they don't want it. In fact, if if you if your sheep do fear your dogs, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. That they want to maintain that respect. I thought that was interesting. The cool thing about this particular place to me was the fact that it was all family run. I mean, mm -hmm. this 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 land had been in this family for what like seven generations or or something like that. But it was very much a generational family pride. Pass it down to the next generation better than you found it. How, it oh, and where the fort was, they had created. Um, like um relationships with universities to allow archaeological archaeological digs there where it could be an archaeological site so students could come do like internships or you know their hands-on study there and they had found so much from so long ago and so learning from people who are deeply tied to the land i mean it's their land it's their kind of land their they've lived for, there yeah hundreds of years their family has and there was just so much pride and the tour guide was funny and amazing and, and we learned a lot more about the culture of you know back then but also now like living in super super small rural you know places and and they would find bones there and anytime you find live you know human remains you have to alert the authorities the nearest Police officers were 35 miles away on those roads, which might take an hour and a half, you know, to get there. Yeah. So it was it was just fascinating to hear these, you know, just 
it was the pride. It was the pride it, in ownership and it, the pride of leaving something better. It really was. You could tell from you know, the, this tour guide, um, you know, it's like, yeah, my, my grandparents lived up on the hill. And I remember as a kid, I went to that elementary school and it's the same elementary school my kids go to. And, and it's just this, and you know, there are three people go there a hundred miles or something. And, and so it's, you get this whole sense of that land mm-hmm. and the pride and the caring yeah. and it's it, yeah that was cool it was it was really really cool and telling stories about running on the ring fort and like falling off and getting yeah. in trouble by mom you know <laughs> it was just it was great stories and it really was and 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 you know it was another um it's interesting because we we had planned originally to get to to Galway I can't want to say Galway but Galway earlier because mm-hmm. it's a, it's a pretty long drive and and people talked about how great Galway was wow we got to get moving we got to get moving. And we just sort of trusted our instincts because we ended up staying in the burn for most of the day, like yeah. between kind of walking around, seeing the church, the fort. And, and you know, we could have easily just said, no, we're on a schedule. Yeah. Let's skip it. So we ended up getting into Galway pretty late, later yeah. than we'd planned. And I'm really, really glad we did. Um, you know, Gal- Galway had certainly some great things about it, but I but I think our experience was better doing what we did and kind of yeah. trusting our instinct there. And, and that was one of my my favorite things. Yeah. Yeah. So by the time we got to Galway, we were pretty we tired. We were pretty tired. And when we were looking at where to stay in Galway, it was pretty expensive. I mean, it was more expensive than some of the other places that we had stayed. I'd heard people had said, "Oh, you're going to love Galway." You know, it's and like Galway's a pretty big town. Yeah, it's so, like the Seattle of of Ireland, you yeah. know, is how it was described, Fisherman's Wharf and all that jazz. And um so it was a little more expensive. So I'm trying to find a hotel and Instead, I find a castle that's in Clare Galway, which, Galway, which is, you know, on, on the outskirts. And um, this was one of our, again, favorite experiences. This castle, like you tell the story. You talked well, to the guy. And, it was and amazing. I will talk about Galway, too. Kind of interesting things happen in Galway. But but honestly, compared to some of the other places that we saw, Gal- Galway is maybe a little bit less interesting. But this castle in particular made that experience for me. So we so we we drive up. It's kind of late. We drive up. And it is a legit castle, like where we were at Ross Castle, and they were going through the the family tower house. It was very, very similar. What had happened is there's a there's a construction company, a family owned construction company, whose job it is their work is to go renovate castles restore. and restore, yeah, restore castles and cathedrals. That's what they do. Well, they found this thing, they bought it, and they've been restoring it with intricate, intricate detail, love and care. Um, back to its kind of original um original state and so and you're it, it 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 just it's just amazing so you have this tower house and the next to the tower house you have essentially the guest houses where the bed and breakfast is which they've they've created to look and feel very it was the most solid very solid place i've ever stayed in my life i mean just solid the construction the hinges the doors the, door pins, the bathroom were like solid all of it. I, it was amazing so there's one point I can't remember if it was that night or the, the morning before, might have been the next, the next, sorry, the, the morning after. That, that there's one point. Okay, let me. So so I don't remember my exact words, but I, but I think you're getting ready. Maybe it was the next morning, and I, and I go out and and the guy that one of the guys that owns it, he says, "Hey, do you want to tour the castle?" I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And keep in mind, up to this point, you're going to a visitor center, you're you're you know paying a fee, you're getting a tour, you're going through the castle. Well, he's like, "Hey, let's go see the castle." Okay, so we're going to the castle, and you know, I, I'm just like blown. So he's showing me all this stuff, and we're, we're he's showing me the history. And at one point, he pulls a little piece of the castle off, and he says, "Yeah, this is where we did the carbon dating to prove this was built in 1410." And he handed me this little piece of the castle. I'm like, you can see That's the amazing. horse hair that they had mixed in yeah. with the wood and, and other things. So it, it was, and so this is where I, I told you I'd picked up a thousand year old sword. It was actually in this castle. The guy goes, "Oh yeah, let's we're on the fourth floor and." And and I'm picking this castle up and 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 so I'm just my mind is blown and I, I I'm like this little kid and so I walk back and I say something to Lisa I don't remember you remember what I said I said something like what did I say he said something along the lines of when I get to the point when I think that my mind can't be blown anymore and it is and it is yeah that's how I felt I'm like I'd seen so much at this point we're getting to, toward the end of the trip like I've seen it all and and my moment I'm not I'm like reset my mind's completely blown yeah. by having this private tour of the castle seeing it seeing how intricately they'd restored it and then 
him kind of sharing the history and, and then make it even better just to top it. So while I'm there, he had to excuse himself for a minute because this distant cousin had come into town to see one of the owners they'd never met before. And they reconnected somehow through some secret past and, and a letter and all kinds of weirdness and mystery. And it's just, <laughs> oh my gosh. There, there, yeah. So there it is. So anyway, Claire there Galloway you Castle, you should go. It's And yeah. it was probably, I keep saying it's my favorite place to set. I've said that about 10 times. This was <laughs> one of my was, favorite places yeah. to stay. But it was a unique experience. It was unique for that experience to get to go on the castle. And the owners and the people who were, were, were so incredible. Okay. And like the next day, the castle was open. So we could just go. Walk I just around. took Lisa in. Let's just walk in there. You went up on the top and like walked around the, the very tippy top the very on the outside. Top. What are those called? I, I don't remember. Anyway. I believe the spires or the um, portocollis or whatever. It, I don't know. Just but thought it, castle it was, words. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Preparing for a siege. Preparing for a siege. How, how is the siege worthiness of this place? Um, it was okay. It was okay. I mean, again, lots of good engineering details, lots of places to throw things down on attackers. <laughs> it's It just would like to see it closer to water, I think, gotcha. if, if there were a little more like a mountain or water, but um, gotcha. that's just me. Okay. But it was it was well done. So the castle was a highlight. It was a highlight for me. We're in Galway. Galway. And Galway, you know, if you're into um, like a lot of shopping and nightlife pubs, things like that. It, it was great. There was a long, uh, a long Lots of walk shopping. along the, along the beach that we walked the whole thing. Yeah. And it was pretty <laughs> and there was a lot going on and, um, but there was, some, there was something just heavy there to me and I couldn't figure out what's, what's going on because I really thought Galway was going to be the place, you know, a lot of, yeah, we really were kind of, so we're super excited to go and lots um, of anticipation and it was beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It was yeah. a beautiful town with lots we enjoyed of our really stay interesting, there. interesting stuff, but there was just something heavy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at one point, Jim and I stopped, we're, we're, we just want a beer. We've been walking a lot tired on this day. Point. We're tired, just want a beer and we can't get served. Nobody served us. Nobody served. We sit there for a long time. It's it, no service. So I'm like, let's just go. So we just get up and, and we go and we keep walking and Jim's got his phone and, you know, trying to figure out where we're going. I and finally he just goes, you know what? I'm done leading. I don't want to navigate. I don't anymore. want to navigate. Like, I'm anymore. Done navigating. You, you, you figure out where we're going. I'm like, cool. I'll take the lead. So I turn us to go this way, which was totally probably the opposite direction from where we needed to be going, quite frankly, and which ended up being perfect. It's exactly because where we needed to be at going. the end of that block, which we would have never seen otherwise, mm -hmm. we come across um, a statue. Uh, it basically it was a memorial to the Magdalene laundries, and um, in planning our trip, I had come across totally accidentally information about these Magdalene laundries or Magdalene asylums, which were were just horrible, horrible institutions where women of supposed ill repute, you know, maybe people who had been in prostitution or accused thereof, or who had gotten pregnant out of wedlock, or, you know, pick, pick your reason that the church might look down upon a woman and decide that she needs purifying. Um, they were put in these, in, in these basically work camps where, um, imprisoned, enslaved, and um, in this case, they were laundries. I thought this only existed in Dublin. And um, turns out it was uh, in multiple places throughout Ireland. Some were even found in, in England and Wales. But this statue was to honor the women um, who had uh, basically been enslaved there. Mm -hmm. And it had turned into kind of a shrine where people, you know, would bring flowers and, and candles. There was a, um, an Irish author who had written plays and poetry and, and other works detailing, you know, or at least expressing um, the tragedies that happen. Um, what was amazing about this to me is that it was in finding mass graves um, that went along with these asylums that they finally started being recognized for, for what they were. They started out Protestant and were, ended up being taken over by, um, by groups of nuns, um, none of which felt very godly. Mm. We'll just, we'll just put no. it that way. Hor horrible, no, horrible, horrible circumstances. Um, lots of abuse, um, physical, sexual, otherwise. 
And um, of course, anytime people would try to bring this up, the Vatican would get pretty pissed. And, and you know, there was a lot of denying all of this. Sinead O'Connor, the singer Sinead O'Connor, I read even recounted her experience in one of these. Now, you might think that this is something that happened in the 1700s, mm-hmm. you know, 1800s. The, the last of these did not get closed down until 1996. 96. I was in, I mean, I was out of college by 96, mm-hmm. you know? Sure. 96. And it was only because a mass grave was found where where the women, but also the children of women who were born there, you know, were were buried together. Um, anyway, I had a pretty emotional reaction and just sat down on the bench and started crying. You did. Um, and um, Jim was super supportive of all that. I think that's why the place felt heavy to me. I think energetically, I was just I was just feeling all of that did some work around this when we, when we got back and also while there, um, yeah, there was, there was just a lot of, of energetic release that needed to happen. That was in relation to, to these particular, um, tragedies and, and Galway was one of those places where, where these laundries had been found. There have been documentaries, um, produced, you know, pieces written about these. If you have any interest in learning more, there's a lot you can find online about the Magdalene laundries, Magdalene asylums. Um, but it's a, it's kind of an ugly part of, of, of the past, the church's past, even Ireland's past, um, that we need to move forward from learn from and also move forward from. Yeah. It's a really powerful moment for you. And, um, I think why we were in Galway. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. So we tried to find live music, we had some good food. We did some shopping. We thought Galway yeah. was going to be our shopping spot where we would get all of our like souvenirs really, to bring so home to family. And, and we just really weren't feeling the shopping. I think that was more us than maybe Galway itself. Yeah, but we liked, the town was great. Um, we took, um, how did we get into town? Cap. We took a cab? Yeah. Okay. We capped both, both ways. Both ways. Okay. Yeah. Because we, we ditched the car. We didn't, yeah, it was not a place. It was that not you, going to be driving. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So thank goodness for cabs. Um, but the, the experience there between the Magdalene Laundry experience and then also Claire Galway Castle, it was, you know, it was just beautiful. And um, and so we're glad we went. There yeah. was purpose to it. Yeah. Um, but then the next morning we get up and we head toward Dublin. Dublin. This is our last stop. And ultimately, the two weeks. yeah, part of before and we're flying out and we were no, flying out yet. in a couple of days in a couple of days and and but we're no we were in dublin yeah for two days two mm-hmm. nights and um so we ditched the car mm-hmm. um now okay so before we got to dublin you got to circle back so if you remember way back at the beginning of this video we talked about tara hill mm-hmm. so we went to see the its hill. parallel twin the of hill of tara, tara. Yeah, which, which is outside of Dublin. And which is exactly where we were supposed to be right. on day one. Which is exactly. But what I realized is I needed to have the Magdalene Laundry experience in Galway before we before went to the Hill of Terra. Right. Because there was other work, energetic, spiritual work that I needed to do, that we needed to do at the Hill of Terra to kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And so we work. found the actual Hill of Terra. And uh, there's it, it's cool for me, too, because there's some Arthurian connections and tie-ins and a lot of kings and it's 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 a fascinating place historically um the stone of destiny the stone of destiny the stone of destiny is at the top of terra hill or hill of terra <laughs> i need to not get those confused anymore this this was a place where it was described as like the veil being very thin between the heavens and the earth the kings this is where the kings would come to be like anointed or you know um but it was it was a very significant spot from a from a historical perspective also from a spiritual perspective um there were ruins there a lot of the ruins are underground so it's like like they can describe them but it's not like we could see a whole lot most of it was underground it was almost all underground so you you felt it more than you saw it it was it was interesting um except for the stone of destiny which was described as a phallic shaped rock it was indeed up out of the ground. it was it was as as culturally and spiritually significant as the location was i was a i was a little underwhelmed by the stone of destiny were you a little bit were you i expected it to, it to be, be larger larger more phallic no it was pretty <laughs> phallic it just wasn't 
I don't know that I want to go down this road with question. Let's just say size matters. <laughs> the Hill of Terra. <laughs> we came, we saw, we left. It, it was great. We did. It was great. It, 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 yeah. it was. It was a fun experience. Um, I'm was, glad we went. The moving. views at the views again yeah. from the top of this of this hill were magnificent. I yeah. mean, all the way around, 360 degree views of amazingness. Yes, just amazingness. And energetically, it was significant. So there, there were things that that we um, that that were meaningful spiritually there as yeah. well. So um, it was just ironic. I thought. You know, oh my God, I had such a blonde moment and I can't believe I got the Hill of Terra and Terra Hill all mixed up and blah. Worked out perfect. And it's exactly the way it needed to work out because yeah. had we stopped there first, when we first got to Dublin, which was, you know, the original plan, um, I wouldn't know what I needed to know to do the work yeah. I needed to do yeah. at the actual location. So we went the other direction. It turned out being even better than mm -hmm. had we gone the way we thought we were going to go. The even first better. Time. Yeah. So. So what's, what's interesting. So, all right, let's think about great music, um, culture, history. I'm from Ireland. We go to this deeply spiritual place. Our very next stop, by contrast, <laughs> is Garth Brooks. Is Garth Brooks. In Ireland. Yeah. I don't know if it's, you know, I'm kind of tied together. So um, so we'd done all, so it was interesting. We'd, we'd booked the tickets quite a while ago and, yeah. and we kind of coordinated it. So we'd be there. It was at this this huge um, football, Park. Court, soccer stadium, football stadium. And um, Cusack Stan, that's true. So, um, those don't know, I'm a huge John Cusack fan, so shout out to Cusack uh, Stan. To Lloyd. 85,000 of your closest Closest Irish friend. It was, it was a lot of, a lot of Irish country cowboy hats at the There were a lot of cowboys. I mean, you know, they were selling them on the street, which was hilarious, you know, to see just see the yeah. felt cowboy hats yeah. being sold on the street but i didn't know I, I was curious i mean we've both seen garth brooks in concert before and coming from oklahoma i mean he lived down the street you know in a couple towns over kind of thing yeah. so but i was curious how irish concerts in a big stadium would be different from american concerts and people what i loved i re which i really did we've been to a couple concerts since where everybody just like stayed seated yeah, everybody I'm, was up and I'm singing like, I don't and excited. I understand that, but everyone strange. standing and singing top of their lungs, and I had so much fun. I'll tell you what we learned. Yeah, they love the fiddle player. Yeah, it's all about the fiddle in Ireland. So you know, Garth has a fiddle player, and when he brought that fiddle player out, the crowd erupted. Yeah, so yeah. So that it was all about the country fiddle. Yeah, it's part of their culture. It is, you know. Yeah. So the concert was great. He mm -hmm. was great. Um. What I actually liked as maybe as much as the concert was after the concert, you're walking back and you go to the, you walk by all these pubs. There's a ton of pubs in Dublin, right? And, and, and like all the pubs are playing country music and people are two stepping and excited. And so that was the next, was that the next night or was that that night? So because Garth was playing that night and then the next night, the next night is when we were leaving. And so all the pubs were very country focused. And part of the challenge was because Garth was in town, all of the the hotel prices were bid up like crazy. Like I mean, like double or triple. With yeah. Animal. And so our flight left at like 5 a.m. on Monday morning. So we just decided we had already dropped the, the car at the airport. I was like, I'm done driving. So we had already dropped the car at the airport. But we decided rather than get a hotel for for Sunday night, we were just going to walk around until 3 a.m. when we needed to. Yeah, and then we'd head, head to the airport. Yeah, catch so a cabin. Yeah. We didn't get a hotel last night. And we left our bags at the front desk of the hotel we were at, and they were great. They kept them. And so we did that. We went and explored Dublin during the day and, and did all the Dublin stuff. We saw the, the castle and different things around Dublin. Guinness. We really enjoyed. Guinness. We went to Guinness. So we ended up in the afternoon. We were at Guinness. And that was an amazing tour. The yeah. engineering associated with Guinness Um just just phenomenal it's like a, it's like a, a disneyland for beer yeah basically it, it, it really was a very cool experience yeah a very cool experience before before that we also went to trinity college oh we got to back up I yeah yeah we yeah. went to trinity college which was like one of my i have to see this while i'm here and um the old library and the book of kells and the library was just so fantastic yeah it I was mean, it was 
amazing. Something you'd think like in Harry Potter and, yeah. and just this, these crazy scenes and books everywhere. Yeah. It was it was phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, it was really a cool place. Really magnificent. And I'm so glad we did that. Again, it was raining this day. Um, we did go to Dublin Castle. We did walk all the way <laughs> to, to Guinness and then all the way back. Totally worth it. The views from the Gravity Bar which is like a 360 degree view, you know, opportunity at the top of the Guinness. It was amazing. Where, yeah. And the beer was just better. I don't know why, what they yeah. did, but they gave a special Guinness beer. That was amazing. It um, was delicious. And that night, oh gosh. Well, Book of Kells. Oh. You, you, you oh, talked yeah. about it some in Scotland yeah. about this, but we actually, it was at the, the Trinity College where the library was. We mm -hmm. saw... Um, they, they have an exhibition. You can actually see the book open to a single page, but then there's a whole lot of history around it. Yeah. And that's where I think a lot of these things tied together, right? Yeah. Whether it was, I, it all came back to Iona and then um, Skellig Michael, Michael, the history. It was like it culminated in kind of reading about, oh. To where we started recognizing connections. Yes. Yeah. And St. Oh. Columba, how St. Columba was so instrumental in, you know, and, and the book of Kells is like, um, it's basically the gospels, you know, the, the four major gospels and, um, illustrated in beautiful, beautiful ways. The one place we didn't go that I really wanted to go was, um, Lindisfarne Island. So it's Holy Island we, one place in, yeah. Yeah, in England. Um, which was but also connected. Also yeah. all connected. And so we had no idea of the connections between all these places, but the book itself and the way it's been preserved and, and the history is still debated, you know, behind it. Like, where did it really come from? You know, it was saved or whatever from the monastery at Kells in Ireland, but there's question about whether maybe it originated in Iona and was secreted over, you know, when the, when the Vikings were, were raiding. Who knows? I, they they don't know. So, um, but it was it was it was a really cool experience. It was really cool. I mean, that, I think we call it you know one of the greatest treasures, mm -hmm. if not the greatest treasure of Ireland. I mean, so yeah. it's really really a big deal. Yeah. And um, but that was that was neat to see. So yeah. we did that during the day. Yeah, and then had that magnificent lunch at the <sighs> at the uh, Parisian yeah bakery. It, it's crazy. We're going through the store and say, oh wait, but remember we had this. But and so, oh yeah, there's more. Yeah. You know, it's just like every. Every at every corner, there was yeah. something amazing, and Dublin we just Dublin was cool. It, Dublin was cool. Yeah. We really liked Dublin, and yeah, we were kind of hungry, and we're just wondering, oh, let's go in there, and it looked like this little French pastry and um, pastry bistro, bakery, bakery. I think I combined like three words there. Bastry. I don't know. That's a new word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bistro bakery. Thing. Best tea you've ever had in your life. Best tea I've ever had. Yeah. It, it had like eighteen flavors in it. It had like delicious. mocha and vanilla, and it was it was delicious. And the sandwiches, and we had macaroons to close. Yes, so they were delicious. Yeah. Amazing, just yeah. incredible. And then dinner was that all beef place. Great, also, great, great dinner. Oh my gosh, Amazing you know, steak. coming from Texas and Oklahoma, you think why would you go to any other country to yeah. get steak? Because we do it really well here. Oh my gosh, the steak was ridiculously good but then we knew we've got hours to kill we got to figure out what to do until three in the morning so we went to a comedy show we an went improv to comedy an improv show. comedy show in this little tiny it was above a pub or an adjacent to a pub bar, yeah. the international bar and it was this kind of little tiny box like literally this little box i don't even get a picture of it but it's a little tiny black box and um by the end of the show it was packed full of people yeah and it was hilarious and we yeah. had a great time we did that we had a great time and then we were out you know just kind of hitting hitting bars afterwards let's have a, a pint here and that's when we did the cotton eye joe we did the cotton eye joe and we went to another it closed down so we closed down two different bars in dublin the next bar we went to is where we met the the folks from that's an interesting story so yeah so what i'll say first of all when you go when just to be clear to talk about all this drinking um we're not big for, for the young people out there yeah. um they're, yeah we're not big drinkers but what's fascinating at these pubs they don't, they don't you don't drink necessarily have to drink like like you can go hang out at a pub and listen to music and not even have a beer and nobody cares yeah. nobody cares they're like hey how's it going you know you might grab a pint there for an hour and then you go to the next one get a pint so we're, we're kind of doing this little pub crawl thing and we're going all different places and 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 it's getting kind of late and there was one i think garth brooks had let out at that point yeah and this this one pub was just packed and lisa is you mean, you mean tell her you go ahead okay so so just packed and like lisa's stopped in this wall of people and then some random person this 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 woman looks at lisa just looks at her kind of <laughs> eyeballs her sees the situation because come on grabs her arm pulls her through the crowd 
like pulls her through the crowd. I thought we were going up to the front to the to stage to I see the live music. I didn't know where she was she taking takes you. She takes you to the bar. I didn't know what, I didn't know, I didn't know if she was hitting on you or what, but I, I, you know, so, so she tracks you all the way across till we get to the bar and then she's like, here you go. And then, and, and so we, we get a drink and I don't remember all the circumstances, but we end up striking up a conversation with her. Mm -hmm. We end up leaving the bar. I think they, we closed that one down too. I think we yeah. closed like our third one. So she and her family went one way and she and her sister. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. And we were walking around and somehow we walked back. We might have gotten something. We to walked eat. down to the the tumble bar and yeah, saw the fist fight. Saw the fist I fight. Heard it at least, yeah. Exactly. And kind of our last thing we did in Dublin is we reconnected and had this long conversation. And they said they started telling us how they were both. She and her sister were from Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. And um, what was the name? It was um, what was the town? Something girls, not Derby girl. No. Ah. Oh, we're gonna have to think of this. Um, wasn't Derby. It wasn't Derbyshire. It was, I can't Dairy. remember. Dairy. Dairy. Thank Dairy. you. Thank you. Dairy. London Dairy, yeah. Dairy girls and London Dairy. And they grew up in this part of Northern Ireland where they said it was not uncommon that we would grow up and be playing outside and there'd be troops with M16s. Mm -hmm. They called this, it the Troubles. You know, the they talked troubles. about the Troubles and it's still called the Troubles. Yeah. But yeah. So that was a fascinating conversation. So such nice people. It was probably oh, such <laughs> three in the morning at this point and we're sitting there talking to him said, yeah, we're, we're going to catch a cab. To go to the airport next. Yep. So they 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 thought they thought that was kind of cool that we were like <laughs> closing down the pubs. A couple of old older folks. A <laughs> couple of wild kids. A couple from of wild the kids States. out <laughs> closing down all these pubs. Yeah. Um, so we had a great conversation with yeah. them and learned a lot about kind of their their lives. And um, I think you connected with them on Facebook. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So that was a lot of fun. So that that was kind of our last. I thought it was fitting. Yeah. That just some random people we ran into. Yeah. We had a great conversation with that them. was so much of the trip i mean there the beauty the history the nature it's it's all there but the people again oh. much like in scotland um that when you could actually have conversations with the people um in ireland it was just so beautiful so beautiful yeah and i don't know if this is where we're supposed to do lessons learned yeah lessons learned. what to learn well um We've covered some of them as we've gone, but I think that that was probably one of the first ones is, is get to know people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all about the people. Be willing to right? have the conversations to ask. Yeah. And listen, listen. Yeah. I, I think that that was a huge learning for me was was to, you, you know, I do think I do go back to the original plan that we had for the whole two weeks. And I think having a framework, right, because there were some things we just would not have been able to do. We wouldn't have been able to see Garth Brooks. We wouldn't be able to do the things we arranged. We would have not been able to stay in such beautiful places if we hadn't planned. We, we did that. But I think once you have a framework in place, the willingness within that framework to just go wherever you feel, yeah. you know, and based on what people tell you, I, I think that was huge. I, I think that the second, that was my first lesson. Mm -hmm. The second lesson is probably um, you know, this or something better, a mm -hmm. willingness that no matter what goes wrong, because things are going to not work out the way you plan, mm -hmm. right. To be able to embrace that and say, okay, that's fine. And I think that kept our spirits up. So we never, it was just such a joy. The entire trip was, was because we just never kind of got down and, yeah. and we just, we looked at it as an opportunity to go on a different adventure. And that yeah. kind of kept us going. Um, and I think maybe the third was, was the opportunity to see something through someone else's eyes to be able to, you know, you talked about, you know, seeing my, the joy that I had when, when I was listening to the music or when I came back from the castle and how that affected you. And similarly, there were, there were times where I could just see, you know, you light up. And I think the, the, um, the ability to share those experiences, and um, really see something from a different perspective, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, for me, the trip was amazing. The whole two weeks was amazing. It's it's one of the best trips, if not the best trip I've ever had in my life. And it was really the ability to embrace that sense of adventure. Mm -hmm. This or something better to be immerse yourself in the local culture, and then then see things through someone else's eyes. Those are probably my lessons learned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, there was so much gratitude, mm -hmm. and um, th there was an element of of faith you know, just kind of surrendering to situations and, and having faith. And I'm not going to lie and say that, um, the driving was easy. Yeah, <laughs> that that, that was, that was kind of stressful for me. I, I was wishing beforehand that there was like some virtual reality game or something where I could get the hang of it. Like before we actually went and I had to get behind a car, but the minute we turned in the keys of the car two days early, by the way, in Dublin, 
I just felt this huge sense of relief. Like, yeah, okay. Cause yeah, yeah. I, I just, that did stress me out a little. Um, so one of the things I learned, you just have to, you have to know what you need. And like with the driving, I needed to stop like every hour just to, just to breathe. Like I just needed breathing breaks. Um, and with a two week trip like that, um, we hadn't planned a down day, but mm-hmm. we took a down day we did. In, in Edinburgh between, you know, Scotland and Ireland, we took a down day that was still active, but we, it wasn't pushy. I mean, it would, you know, and that I think saved us or saved me. At least I needed yeah. that down day. Working I in that know time. That I needed that. Um, but the other thing is, is follow the magic and trust that when things aren't going exactly as you think they should, that something better is in store. You know, that there are things that I just couldn't have known going in Mm. that when I learned them, everything made sense. So even though I thought that I'd messed up like Tara Hill or the Hill of Tara, it turned out that it was exactly what we needed. You know, that sunrise was amazing, but ending, you know, at the Hill of Tara after having seen other things put like put the bow on top, we were able to tie up all the loose ends and do do the work, you know, do the energetic work that needed to be done, but in the right order. And so that, that was an incredible lesson too. And I think being willing to just really appreciate the interests and of someone else. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. I am so grateful to you Hmm. for making it possible for being such an incredible travel buddy, adventure buddy. Um, Deeply, deeply grateful. Well, I am. Thank you. And I'm deeply grateful back for um, your driving, number one, <laughs> for your vision, um, for, your, for your attitude and your perspective every day, you know, to keep yeah. keep things in perspective and, and see the positive and the joy in the adventure ahead. That made all the difference. So mm. thank you. It was incredible. Uh, to anybody, the best, to anybody who might be considering either Ireland or Scotland, I couldn't recommend them more. I mean, I, I read both were such delights. People have asked, well, which did you like better? And I, I can't, I mean, I like certain things about certain places, but they were both amazing in their own right. I couldn't pick. I would have yeah. said Scotland hands down before I went to Ireland. I mean, I, there was like, <laughs> there's no way. Mm-hmm. And then after Ireland, I'm like, but some of the experiences we had in Ireland, you can't, I, they were amazing. They were too. amazing. Yeah. And, and so how do you pick? So, um, yeah, they're, but they're both great. Yeah. So So. I I think the bottom line for me is get out and see the world. Just get out if you can, you know, see the world. And if you can't, you know, go across the seas, seeing other parts of your own neighborhood even, and having those conversations with people and letting yourself be guided down the scenic path, you know, down the dirt roads or the one lane roads. I was going to echo that. It doesn't, you know, we were, we were really blessed to have this opportunity in our lives to go have an adventure in, in such an amazing place. But, but everything that we've talked about, the, the lessons we learned, the approach, you know, there's so many adventures to explore close to home. Yeah. Um, if, if you just take the time to do it, that, yeah. that, you know, get off the beaten path. Yeah. Just go meet people and, and be yeah. open and where it takes you. And there's so many, um, it's just a willingness to, to do that and to embrace it and and feel joy in it and and wonder in every single day. So it doesn't have to be a grand adventure, um, you know, every day. Every like day is that. an adventure. Yeah. 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 So thank you to those of you who have listened to our so many words. <laughs> didn't Been mean a lot the of gift words. of gab. We're any more of it. Of um, but thank you for listening. And um, I can't wait for our next adventure. Uh, yeah. For something the- will be you know, in, in the work soon, I have a feeling for the, the spreadsheet and the pendulum, the spreadsheet and the pendulum wishing you, um, joy and wonder again, which was kind of our themes going into all of this and, uh, incredible love and opportunities for gratitude along your own scenic route of the soul until next time, until next time. Thanks for tuning in for this episode of dirt road divinity. If you liked what you saw, please go ahead and like the video or leave a comment letting me know. Also, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and be kept up to date when new episodes drop in the future. If you'd like to connect in between episodes, you can come uh, follow 
the Facebook or Instagram pages, just at Dirt Road Divinity. You can even email me with any show or guest ideas that you might have. And my email address is lisa at dirtroaddivinity.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to uh, you tuning in next time.